Moving on to the next examples of redox reaction, displacement of halogen from its halide solution. Halogens are elements in group 17 in the periodic table of elements. All halogen have tendency to accept one electron to form negative ion called halide ion. For example, chlorine become chloride. More electronegative halogen can gain electron easily. So by gaining electron, the halogen undergo reduction and so act as oxidizing agent. While halide ion can be oxidized easily to halogen by losing electron, undergo oxidation, and so act as reducing agent. So when displacement of halogen from its halide solution occur, there's a transfer of electron from the halide ion to the halogen. The electronegativity of halogen decreases going down group 17 because the nucleus become further away from the outermost occupied shell so that the ability of halogen to gain electron to become negatively charged haline decreases going down the group. Halogen which place in higher position in group 17 are more electronegative. That is to say, this halogen have higher tendency to gain electron. So the halogen can be reduced easily to halide ion. So the halogen act as strong oxidizing agent. On the other hand, halide ion of halogen which plays on the lower position in group 17 can be oxidized easily by losing electron. And since this halide ion readily undergo oxidation, the halide ion act as strong reducing agent. As a general rule, a more electronegative halogen will displace halide ion of less electronegative halogen or higher position halogen in group 17 will displace lower position halogen in group 17 from its halide solution. Now, let's look at the reaction between the halogen chlorine bromine iodine with potassium chloride, potassium bromide, and potassium iodide. Chlorine can displace both bromine and iodine from its halide solution because chlorine is more electronegative than both bromine and iodine. Bromine, unable to displace chlorine from, from potassium chloride solution because bromine is less electronegative than chlorine. However, bromine can replace iodine from potassium iodide solution because bromine is more electronegative than iodine. However, since iodine is less electronegative than both chlorine and bromine, so iodine cannot displace both chlorine and bromine from their halide solution. This reaction is also summarized in the table. Next, we will look at the function of 111 trichloroethane to confirm the identity of halogen. The color of halogen in aqueous solution changes slightly with concentration. Therefore, the presence of halogen is confirmed using organic solvent such as 111 trichloroethane CH3CCl3. When aqueous solution of halogen is mixed with trichloroethane, two layers will be formed. The denser trichloroethane layer will be at the bottom, 
and the less dense aqueous solution will be at the top. And based on the color of this trichloroethane layer, we can confirm the identity of halogen present. So the trichloroethane layer color for chlorine is colorless, for bromine is brown, and for iodine is purple. Now let's discuss the procedure for the displacement reaction between halogen and halide solution. First, 2 cm cube of potassium bromide pour into the test tube, followed by 2 cm cube of chlorine water, and then 2 cm cube of trichloroethane solution. And to find out whether displacement occur or not, the color of the trichloroethane layer is observed. When chlorine reacts with potassium bromide and potassium iodide, displacement occur because the color of the chloroethane layer is brown for potassium bromide and purple for potassium iodide. This indicates that both bromine and iodine is formed or displacement occur. For the reaction between bromine and potassium chloride and potassium iodide. Bromine is located below chlorine in group 17, so bromine cannot displace chlorine. Color of trichloroethane layer is brown, which suggests the presence of bromine. So bromine cannot displace chlorine from potassium chloride solution. However, for potassium iodide, the color of trichloroethane layer is purple, which means bromine is able to displace iodine from potassium iodide solution. Next, for iodine, reaction with both potassium chloride and potassium bromide, the color of trichloroethane layer are both purple, indicating the presence of iodine. So, no reaction occur because iodine unable to displace both chlorine and bromine from the halide solution. Now let's discuss the reaction between chlorine and potassium bromide solution. The oxidation number of both chlorine and bromine is zero because they are in the neutral elemental step. The oxidation number of potassium ion is plus one, bromide ion is minus one, potassium ion plus one and chloride is negative one and you can observe that the oxidation number of potassium does not change so potassium ion doesn't undergo neither oxidation nor reduction next the oxidation number of chlorine decreases from zero to negative one so oxidation number decreases from zero to negative one while the oxidation number of bromide ion increases from minus one to zero so oxidation number increases from minus 1 to 0 so we can summarize that chlorine undergo reduction and bromide ion undergo oxidation now let's continue to write the half equation of reduction and half equation of oxidation for the reaction between chlorine and potassium bromide solution. So first of all, we convert the chemical equation into ionic equation. The aqueous solution can be converted into its respective ion. So potassium bromide becomes 2K plus ion, 2 bromide ion. Potassium chloride becomes 2K plus ion, and 2 chloride ion. 
Now, ions that exist in both reactant and product can cancel out each other. And now we'll just write what is left on the equation to form the ionic equation. So Cl2 plus two Br minus produce two Cl minus and bromine. Okay, next, to write the half equation, step one is to write the reactant and product. For half equation of reduction, the reactant is Cl2 and the product is Cl minus. For half equation of oxidation, the reactant is Br minus and the product is Br2 bromine. Step 2, we need to balance the atom. Chlorine Cl2, so Cl minus is also 2 Cl minus. Br minus and the reactant is Br2, so we add 2 Br minus to balance the atom. So the atom is now balanced. Next step is to add electron. Chlorine undergo reduction by gaining electron. So the electron is written on the reactant side. Bromide undergo oxidation by losing electron. So the electron is written on the product side. And the charge is already balanced. So we can summarize that chlorine undergo reduction to chloride ion by gaining two electron bromide ion undergo oxidation to bromine by losing two electron so since chlorine undergo reduction chlorine act as oxidizing agent while potassium bromide solution acts as reducing agent. Chlorine is able to replace bromine from potassium bromide solution because chlorine is more electronegative than bromine. So to summarize the displacement of halogen from its halide solution, a more electronegative halogen can displace a less electronegative halogen from its salt solution, whereby the halide ion of less electronegative halogen undergo oxidation by losing electron, and the electron is received by the more electronegative halogen that undergo reduction by gaining the electron. So essentially, there is transfer of electron from the halide ion to the more electronegative halogen. So that the halide ion of less electronegative halogen act as reducing agent while the more electronegative halogen act as oxidizing agent. Thank you very much. That's the end of this video. And I would like to remind everyone to stay calm, stay home,